Hello and welcome to Sound Like Where today we're going to be having a look at Easily. Now I decided to do Easily because of my recent cover of it, it's one of my personal favourite Muse songs and production wise for the guitar it has quite a minimalistic approach for it so there's a lot to kind of delve into, potentially reinvent the song so I'm going to show you more how I try to sound like easily as well as kind of trying to mimic some of the sounds that you hear on the original version. The guitar I'm going to be using for this is going to be my Manson MA Evo with sustainer but before we get into the video don't forget to like, share and subscribe and hit the notification bell to make sure that you don't miss out on any of my content. So with that all out of the way let's get started into how to sound like easily. So to get things started let's have a look at the intro. Now effects wise for this I'm using my whammy with a harmony octave up, my blues pedal for a bit of crunch and some delay tapped into the BPM of the song. The controls for the delay in terms of the level and feedback are around 12 o'clock clock for me at the moment but you can sort of ramp them up if you want to kind of delve into the kind of ambient feel but if you're kind of stuck with one delay like I am you have kind of have to compromise between the kind of big ambience and kind of some subtle delay work later on. Having a look at how the Boss ES8 is actually programmed with this all the signal is kind of straight down the middle it's exactly the same effect you hear on either side. A lot of um patches that I create with my ES8 now kind of how I like to have kind of one distortion on one side and one distortion on the other or kind of you know sounds on one either side but because of the kind of the nature of this song and kind of how I see it um, I like to kind of have this kind of straight down the middle to kind of you know create some variety within my sound so that I'm not always trying to do big stereo kind of things some of it kind of can still be essentially a mono sound it works really well for it and the things I'm playing for this aren't kind of trying to be out there and crazy it is just following the bass line in terms of what I actually play for the intro part of the song I always follow what the bass line does to kind of double up on that sound it's not too out there it's not too crazy you kind of treat it what I'm playing as more of kind of a synth pad if I'm kind of strumming the chords a little bit of a lead if I do broken chords to try and get some kind of dynamics in there but I never do anything crazy because of what comes later on in the song is a lot more crazy and out there and to kind of create that kind of range that dynamic range within the song I do like to pull it back so when it is going quite hard and heavy and really out there it punches it a little bit harder because you've always got that kind of more subdued sound going on the subdued kind of feel for it I do double down with the kind of the delay that I'm using to still definitely have delay in there to kind of create the ambience depending upon how much I want to ramp up or down the feedback up to you how you would do it but that's the approach that I have so with that in mind this is what those sounds sound like So with the intro done, let's move on to the verse. Now keeping in mind with the intro, the effects that I'm using there, I keep that same patch for the verse. Now with the way that I use my patch with the verse, it really helped to kind of bring out the kind of the higher harmonics of what I'm playing, particularly because of the whammy setting that I'm using and also the, de the delay in there to kind of keep the ambience going. And the blues pedal was there just to kind of get a bit of bite in there to kind of help push the signal out a bit further. The exact same approach helps for what I like to use in the verse. Now my recent cover of Easily, you'll see that I like to use my sustainer holding single notes and just kind of go up the scale using the delay to kind of really kind of feed into that kind of ambience. If you're wondering what kind of delay settings to use for the ambience, here you might want to have a little bit more feedback to really fill out and thicken out that sound. If you have the ability to manipulate the feedback on the fly or you have two delays, this is where you might want to use that or utilize that. I do have the Boss DDA which allows me to use an expression pedal to control certain settings within that so if I wanted to I could ramp up the, the feedback for this particular part of the song um, that's where I would ramp up the feedback, really thicken out that ambience to kind of really play around with it. Entirely up to you if you'd want to do something like that. Because in the studio version there is absolutely no guitar from what I can hear. It really is your opportunity to kind of take it somewhere that 
you really decide where it should go or where it can go. Keeping that in mind, with the approach that I have, I do still like to go with the approach of having something in there but a bit subdued. It might stick out a little bit, but no hard kind of tones, uh, no big distortions, no nothing that's gonna be very distracting because I still want this to kind of support the rhythm that's going on. As it goes up the scale, you kind of build up this kind of tension to then be released for the chorus. So I keep that very much in mind for my approach of the verse of Easily. So with all that in mind, it sounds like this. So now we're moving on to the chorus. Now this is where things get interesting, it's where it gets gritty. We're moving away from the kind of the subtle ambiences of the intro and the verse and bringing in some distortion. So I'm taking out my whammy, I'm taking out my delay, bringing in my boss overdrive distortion and my big muff. Now the blues pedal is staying in there. It has a little bit of gain, a little bit of crunch, a little bit of bite in there to kind of keep things going. And it's a recent pedal that I've bought and I've been playing around with it and I've discovered that this pedal particularly cleans up really quite nicely with the subtle amount of gain I've got in there. If you play softly, it effectively is more of a, a clean boost, maybe with a little bit of dirt, but when you really start opening it up, it does get a lot more crazy, it gets a lot more kind of character in there. It is completely possible to kind of remove it, but I personally enjoy it. It adds a lot more crispness, a little bit more consistency with the levels in there. So I do have that in front of my Boss Overdrive Distortion. So on one side, I have my Blues pedal with my Overdrive Distortion, and on the other, I have my Big Muff. Now putting those all together, on the one side, you get a nice direct overdrive tone where you can really pick out the individual sounds that are going on in there. But on the other side, with the Big Muff, you get a lot more grit, a lot more muddy sounds, but a lot more power in there. And putting putting them together, I get a sound that I really enjoy doing. If you wanted to go for a sound that's a little bit more accurate to the actual original song, I'd take out the Big Muff and just have the blues pedal and the overdrive distortion just going in there with a, essentially a, as a mono sound to really pick out the individual notes that are being played and to have a, have a lot more clarity in there. The guitar itself is just following the bass line. It's not doing anything crazy to attract attention. It's just helping the song move along. But because of the ambiguous kind of nature of the guitar for this whole track, essentially apart from the solo, I'm treating it as a blank canvas and I really want to go hard on getting the guitar to stand out a little bit more. Also because of the subtle ambient nature of what's gone in the intro and the verse, I'm trying to separate those sounds a lot more to give the choruses a lot more of an identity, which is why I've brought in the Big Muff and why I think it's a suitable addition to this tone. It is entirely up to you if you do exactly the same. I really enjoy doing it, also I really enjoy a Big Muff uh, pedal itself. So with all that in mind, this is what it sounds like. <laughs> So now let's move on to arguably the most interesting part of Easily, which is the solo. Now I have two patches for the solo for this song, the first one being the more fuzz focused part. So the setup for this patch is on one side, I have my blues pedal in front of my fuzz factory and on the other, my boss overdrive distortion. Nothing else, no delays, just a lot of dirt, a lot of gain to really push those sounds. Now my fuzz factory and my overdrive distortion have such different characteristics, they do go together really quite well. They're not stepping on each other's toes. So you have the kind of the nice bright side of the fuzz factory really cutting through, but with the, a lot more of the mids of the overdrive distortion making up for what we don't get from the fuzz factory. It does help it stand out and the fact that they're kind of panned separately from each other helps kind of widen that stereo field, helps to kind of have a bit more of an immersive sound for it. So with that in mind, it's a really simple approach for guitar tone. I really enjoy it. It's not a sound that I use often, so when I do use it, it really does stand out quite a bit. And so this is what it sounds like. <laughs> So 
So after the first half of the solo, I'm changing the patch up. So in terms of the setup for this patch, I'm taking the whammy pedal, then splitting the signal. On one side is my big muff, and on the other, my overdrive distortion with the delay. So the delay is only affecting the overdrive distortion part of the signal. So this sound is potentially kind of a bit more of a complicated approach because of the way that the delay is affecting only one of the pedals, but the whammy is affecting this, the signal entirely. So keeping that in mind, what I can hear from this version to what we actually hear on the actual studio version of the song is kind of a different approach it's not as my my version is not as crisp and not as punchy essentially as the actual original version I'm this is very much my own interpretation of it keeping most of the ideas in mind particularly in the first half of the solo is very very fuzzy indeed and I've kept that approach by using a lot of fuzz factory in that section but for this part I'm changing it up ever so slightly with my own kind of interpretation, but still essentially keeping the same thing going on in there. You know, some distortion, some delay and some whammy, but then playing around with how I like to use those. And also because I really like using stereo sounds to really widen things up, but it gives you the opportunity to kind of pick and choose what I'm really doing with this to kind of come up with your own way of playing this. To take that one step further, there are two ways you can play this part of the solo. You can just use the whammy pedal as essentially just a stomp box where it is just on as, as an octave up the whole time. Or you can then play around with the whammy and treadle it uh, as we've heard from the actual live performance of Easily. I like to go between the two, mainly leaning towards the kind of treadle version of the whammy, just because there's a little bit more movement, there's a lot more dynamics in there, but it's entirely up to you how you would want to do it. One of the main things that you'll hear if you go down the route of manipulating the whammy in real time with the song is the delay repeating the movement of the whammy. It helps to kind of push the ambience even further by elongating that sound even more in a different way than it would from if you were to just use the whammy as a just an uh, just a stomp box just one pedal just on and then just go with it that's something that i really enjoy doing particularly if i do ramp up the feedback even more but going back to what we i said earlier you do have to compromise on where that level of feedback is going depending upon the approach that you're going to have but it's all part of the idea of using the minimalistic approach for guitar production for this song and then just going crazy with it and really making it your own. This is quite, for me, just this is quite a rare song for me to try and potentially reinvent how the song potentially sounds. But it's a really good approach to have. It gives you a lot more of an idea about how you can really use your effects as opposed to just trying to mimic the song like for like. And so with all those sounds in mind, this is what they sound like. <laughs> So for the final part of Sound Like Easily, we're going to be having a look at the last chorus. Now this is split in two. The chorus is actually twice the length of what we've heard previously. The first half, the first two run throughs, is exactly the same as the first chorus in terms of the pedals I'm using. And for the second half of the chorus, I'm switching it up by taking out my overdrive distortion and putting in my MXR Prime distortion in there. Now the reason I'm doing this is because the chorus is twice as long as it normally is, and I want to kind of keep pushing that envelope as far as as I can to keep the sound interesting, to keep it going, to keep all the energy kind of going on in there. So I take out the overdrive distortion and because the prime distortion has so much more Christmas to its sound, it really stands out a lot more. And as a final sound, as a final feel for the song, it works so well. Contrasting it against the kind of the muddiness of the Big Muff, it really complements it really well. You get that good low gritty sound from the Big Muff and the nice crisp high ends of the Prime Distortion. Putting them together, you get a solid overall sound that works really well for individual notes, just like the chorus for Easily. So with that in mind, this is what it sounds like. <laughs> Thank you. 
And then for the final part of the song, I'm going back over to my original chorus patch, rolling off some of the gain from the guitar, and then just doing some chucker as I'm kind of going up the neck. Just to really round it off, that's taken directly pretty much from the live version of Easily. <laughs> You don't want to do that approach if you want to kind of create a bit more of an ambience I would switch over to the intro and the verse patch that I've got which is you know leaning much more on the whammy and the delay side of things just maybe in swell in some a minor chord or some lead stuff in the right key and just kind of go crazy with it that's the real final part of the song again really emphasizing the blank canvas nature of the song there's a lot you can really do with it if you want to go big for the end or if you want to go something a little bit, little bit more subtle and insidious then you can go for the ambience really up to you and it's just a lot of fun to play with. So there we have it, that was Sound Like Easily. Now I know I said at the beginning of the video that the song production wise for the guitar is actually quite minimalist. I hope that's kind of really shone through, but what I've also done is shown you the ways that you can approach the guitar production from several different angles and really make it your own. This is quite a rare opportunity for you to potentially reinvent the guitar tone for a Muse song. In a lot of their songs, the guitar production for it really has established its own sound with very little opportunity to kind of tweak it a little bit but with easily because of the minimalistic nature and the fact that there's not that much guitar being played it really gives you a chance to go crazy with it so i hope that what i've shown you has given you a good first step into really making it your own but as always i'd love to know what you thought about this video and all of my other sound like videos down in the comments below so be sure to let me know so until next time i've been harry and thanks for watching <laughs>